Hi everybody, Mick Lubinskis coming to you here from uh, the WeWork in San Mateo and i um, really, really lucky to have uh, Celine on the, the call with me here. Hi Celine, how are you doing? Hi, good, how are you? Really good, thank you so much for supporting She's Building a Robot and um, we just hit 465 pre-orders, so super exciting. That's awesome. Yeah, and um, I'd love to um, hear more about your story. Um, let, let's start with, uh, so what do you currently do? Yeah, so I had a conversational design team, uh, meaning we uh, design conversations for chatbots, for IVR, um, for uh, devices like Google Home and Amazon Alexa. So basically, we're the um, the behind the scenes creators of a lot of that AI that uh, you might interact with on an everyday basis. You just don't even know it. Okay. And well, let's go way, way back before I find out how you got into that, because that's obviously something that uh, has only been around for, for a period of time, even though IVR has been around for a bit longer. Can you tell us about your, um, one of your very first interactions with, with technology and computers uh, and, and what was the instigator? Was it a teacher, a friend, a parent? How did you, how did you get excited about tech? That's a great question. Yeah, my, my dad is the um, instigator, I guess, of my love of technology. He um, always had a computer in the house, was a Tetris addict back in the day. Really? How, how, how bad and, was it like um, he'd sneak away to do Tetris and, you know? Yeah, yeah, playing Tetris during dinner. My mom would always yell at him, get off the computer. So, yeah, definitely he's always been a very techno technophile. Okay. Um, yeah, so definitely yeah, I got, got me always exposed to a computer back in the day. I always, I think I always had a computer in the house or something like a computer. Um, yeah, I just really um, love technology and got me to love technology, I guess, by proxy of him. Um, you know, got interested in all the video games on it. Um, he had a bulletin board, you know, back in the day wow. where it was all text-based. And that's how I, uh, I, I met um, a person online there. And I got to go on a little date, supervised with my parents. It was just all very back in the day, online dating oh, before online dating. Thing. Bulletin board online dating. That is yes. amazing. <laughs> Try to explain yeah, so that to the, uh, to the current crowd, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so just have had technology in my life, yeah, from, from day one and been very comfortable with it. I don't know if that's just, you know, genetics or because I've had exposure to it, so, yeah. Wow, fantastic. That's really, really interesting. Um, and um, how did you end up, you're, you're in Waterloo, Canada. I'd love to know uh, a bit more about Waterloo. It's a, it's a pretty special place in the world, in the world, Totally, but also certainly in the world of tech. Um, yes. how, did you, how did you end up there and uh, what's, what's tech life like in Waterloo? Yeah, so um, it's, uh, yeah, I ended up going to school in the University of Guelph and kind of migrated west um, for work more than anything. Yeah, my first um, job at a school was in Kitchener, Waterloo. And yeah, back in, I think, I, I don't know if it started because of, yeah, Blackberry back in the day. It just, it started to kind of be a, you know, they have the University of Waterloo there that's that's very um, prominent in the technology space. Um, so yeah, it just, it ended up blossoming, I think, from that. Um, and now there's tons and tons of startups there. I mean, it's just, you can probably, yeah, I don't know, can't count, you know, probably over, I don't know, 300, 400 startups probably is my guess of all these different companies. Um, the company that I started with was a startup only. I think when I started, it was like 10 people, you know, starting there. So it was a very small company. Yep. So lots of opportunity, lots of people flock here because of the uh, university. So yeah, just a really good, you know, like you said, a hot spot for, for tech. I think is one of the first places in along a lot of the cities that had free Wi-Fi. Just as you walk down the street, you could get free Wi-Fi. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. And um and you're in working in AI now, a fairly new field. I, I do a little bit in AI as well, and it's um, I love it because it's so new and fresh. How did you get started there, and, and what's life like working in, in AI? Yeah, yeah, I got started. Um, I, I've always loved app chatbots and AI. You know, I've, I've always played with them as a kid. You know, when Alice was around in, like, 1995, I would go and try to stump her and, and try to, you know, chat with her to see how what how, test the grounds to see how well they could create her as a person. So I loved the idea of chatbots. When I um, saw the opportunity, the company that I started with was called IntelliResponse. So basically, um, it was a company that made chatbots before chatbots were chatbots, I'd say, like before it was a thing. 
Um, so I really was interested in the position there, um, uh, and that's kind of how I got started in the professional world of chatbots anyway, where I got to um, not only build them myself, but I created a team there to actually help create them with me. So we started kind of more of a professional services where we would do end-to-end -end creation, optimization of all these chatbot things for um, our customers, and we ended up growing from like about yeah, 10 customers to, I don't know, 200, 100. And, so customers, so yeah, it was um, that company really fueled. I think a lot of the chatbot stuff that happened after that. So yeah, interesting. And so you mentioned that you um, you manage a team now. Um, can you talk to us about um, the difference of uh, working with technology versus working with people? Yeah, that's very interesting. They both. Uh, I would say people are generally much better at doing, when you ask them to do something, they'll generally do it versus technology does not. <laughs> it's uh, technology can be challenging, lots of bugs, lots of issues. But um, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, ch working with people is, um, and it's funny because as you're building chatbots, you're trying to create something that is like a person. So you're tr always trying to see, you know, how people work, how people think. Is that how chatbots should work and how people and chatbots should think and trying to kind of compare the two? But yep. yeah, definitely working with people is it's still because of the, there is a disparity there. They are still very different things, so it's yep. there is a line. But one thing there may not be. You never know. There might be. Um, you might be harder to tell if you're working for a person and working for a chatbot. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you, uh, do you have an opinion on that in terms of uh, the future of AI? Is it uh, going to get to the singularity or? Are we getting to a point where almost everything will be done and, and life's going to be very, very different or do you think it's going to take a long time and humans will still have lots of work to do? Yeah, it's a great question. There's, there's a lot, you know, we're in so, so close to having um, chatbots do a lot for us, you know. I think to do some of the complex things, we're a long way away. You know, just if you, if you go back and look at your last Amazon conversation, if you chatted somebody on Amazon, my package was late. I just did it the other day and just the back and forth of refunding this and refunding this and give me a percentage refund of this and reordering all the stuff. It's just to think about it as a designer. It's very complex to, to map all that out. Sure. We might be able to do it, but um, the nuance is still in conversation. It's still, I think that those little things that you're always going to need a human for until we can, you know, really emulate that. Um, but I mean, we're doing a lot now today. I think, you know, the, the gap is getting much smaller. I just don't think, yeah, I, I can't see a world right now any way that we could deal without people entirely. There's always going to need to be somebody behind the scenes kind of coaching and mentoring and that little chatbot, but closer, definitely yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. And if there's uh, teenage girls out there, maybe who've, who've read the book and are thinking about a career in technology, do you have any advice of approach or getting started or things they can think about uh, to maybe help them, uh, help them along? Yes. Yeah. I would say don't be, don't be scared by technology. It's, it's, sometimes you'll see these words and terms and you know, people will try to make it sound more complex than it is. It's, a lot of it is not. A lot of it is knowing how people think, knowing how people interact with machines, how, how you would interact with a machine, how you would want to deal with something. That's what I do. You know, I don't have a degree in anything super technical. I have a bachelor's of science in psychology. Um, it, that has fueled me to love how people think and how people interact with machines and playing with machines to learn that that's all I really have done and I fell into technology so yeah you don't have to be you know in have a, a computer science degree you don't have to have a math degree you don't have to have those things you can but you don't yeah don't be daunted by the world of technology it's actually a very welcoming and warm place if you can um yeah, think how uh, somebody would interact with a machine. That's all it really is. So, yeah. Fantastic. Well, that's great. And thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, my goal with these interviews is to show that there are uh, real women, not, not in a fiction novel, real women who have amazing careers in technology uh, and they don't all wear lab coats and... Um, um, and uh, aren't so socially awkward that they can't get on a, on a, on a video call. So, uh, <laughs> so wonderful for you to, to share your story. I really, really appreciate that. And uh, best of luck with the, the rest of your work. And um, I'll, I'll be posting this up on the Medium blog post for She's Building a Robot. And, uh, again, thank you so much for your support. Great. Well, thank you. I think you, what you're doing is awesome, and I'm so excited to read it. I think that's a great idea you had. 
Well, now with so many so many sales, I now have to. I'm, I feel the pressure of making sure the book is really, really good. So I, I, it's going to be a, a point of a bit of a rewrite. So I love the feedback. So, but thank you yeah. very much. We'll uh, hopefully talk to you soon. Yeah, great. Thanks so much.